This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Tom, we will talk some Arkansas football, but to continue on that conversation, some big games in the SEC this weekend, like Georgia hosting Ole Miss. If you had to pick one between Alabama and Georgia to represent the SEC for the college football playoff, who are you taking at this point right now? Hey, guys. I'm taking Georgia because Alabama's got some some flaws that you've seen. Uh, O-line protection, Arkansas sacked them a bunch. Some other teams have. Um, and Georgia seems to me, and, and, and they'll get Bowers back here pretty soon, I think, uh, to have fewer flaws. And even though a lot of teams have played them close, yeah, I would definitely take Georgia. It should be a fantastic SEC championship game. I'm really excited about Jalen Milrow is going to have to play really well this weekend as will Peyton Thorne they've had some quality offensive games the last two weeks I know Arkansas only mustered three points against Mississippi State they were able to get 27 and hang 31 on Vanderbilt Tom is that a byproduct of the competition or has Auburn's offense started to click these last few weeks Uh, yeah I actually think it's both I think they're getting confidence and they're starting to click guys they ran for I think it was 219 on Georgia mm-hmm. I don't remember where we were but it was during that blur of road games in a row when Auburn played Georgia but you know they hung with them throughout the game and I think it ended up being a touchdown difference the game was at Auburn but they came to play that day and Auburn's going to be a tough um, downhill running team for, for Arkansas to stop so um, you know Jarquez Hunter he's he's a big time back and it looks like to me they've settled on Thorne. I mean, they've, they've talked about he understands the full dynamic of the offense, and it's his range right now. We might see a package with Robbie Ashford, but Thorne is a good runner. And so this is going to be a really tough test. And, you know, Arkansas is feeling its oats after that big road win, but they're going to have to knuckle down to, to beat Auburn. Tom Murphy with us here on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. Tom, let's focus on the offensive line a minute. We've got some moving uh, going around with Kutas uh, injured and move over at right tackle. Uh, How concerned should should fans be when you've had an offensive line that hasn't produced well all year and now you've got changes heading into a big home conference game? Well, you know, they've gone through a lot of, you know, issues on the O-line and they feel like they've come up with a scheme that allows them to to block better. And you heard – Sam Pittman describing it last night with Chuck about how instead of like just man-to-man stuff, they're doing stuff where you pass guys on and that allows them to just keep pushing forward and, and what have you. So, um, um, I think Tykees Crawford had a good rest of the game last week and they feel okay about that. And now that Devin Manuel appears to be healthier, at least now they have some options at, at the tackle spots. And, um, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't chalk that up as, as a, one of the huge concerns going into this game. And how does the uh, the, the injuries at tight end and Washington now being out and down to your third string tight end, how does that affect maybe the personnel grouping and the schemes and, and how involved the tight end will be in the offensive game plan this week? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, again, talking last night, Sam Pittman's like, well, they'll, they'll, some tight end will step up. And apparently Gums blocked a lot better. And so if he's out there blocking better, then there'll be some things where he can turn around and catch a pass. And, you know, it's funny that, or it's interesting that after Ty Washington went out, they clearly had a nice package for him because he caught two passes on the first three snaps of the game that went for good yardage, I think 37 yards, um, that that those type plays weren't the rest of the way. So um, I know Gums can catch passes. He's done it at North Texas and, um, you know, Bax and Sherman can catch passes too. Uh, it's just that maybe they focus more on um, on the blocking part of things when those guys are in there. Uh, but clearly, they've lost two dynamic guys um, in Has and Washington now, and um, it does affect your depth, no doubt about that. Tom Murphy with us here on the McCarty Daniel Hotline. He's with Whole Hog Sports and the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Tom, another pass catcher you might miss for Saturday is, is Andrew Armstrong. I don't know coach has said some positive things about him this week, but you and I were both in Gainesville. We both saw him lifeless on the turf. I just I don't know how he comes back for that this week. If they don't have him, who opens up the defense? Who opens up the top of the defense for Arkansas at wide receiver? Well, um, that's a great question. And by the way, nice spiral from Tesla on that pass. And Armstrong almost 
came down. I mean, he did come down with it. It was kind of on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. He just didn't secure the catch. Uh, but, I mean, to hear Sam Pittman talk, Andrew Armstrong is going to be ready to play. But um, I, I think I think Satania would be um, a guy, even though he's not as tall as Armstrong, um, he'd be a guy who, if you're going to, you know, try to stretch the defense, you could go to. And um, there's some other guys. I mean, look, I think we could admit that Sam Mbake would have been uh, a, a really good guy to have on this roster that, without the broken leg. Uh, because their wide receiver depth was tested. And I think of all the comments and remarks I made on this air in camp and heading into the season that I thought the um, receivers were going to be A-OK, I, I think that might be the one that uh, might have you know, been exaggerating a bit because um, they just haven't, you know, the experience, the ability to get open and all that hasn't been as, as prevalent as, as we thought. But... Um, Wilson, you know, Tesla, there's some guys, and I think they're going to get back to their bread and butter stuff with those receivers. You speak of depth, depth has been tested at the running back position with Rock and being out a good chunk of the games. Finally saw him back. He goes for 100 plus. If you're Jimmy Smith and you're uh, Kenny Guyton, how do you factor Rashad DeBinion back into the rotation with him coming back from his grandmother's funeral this past week? Yeah, probably the same way you did with. with you know, A.J. Green last week, and I know Green didn't go back in after the fumble, but that kid's been solid, and, of course, he was wide open on the touchdown catch to open the game. But um, uh, clearly, Sanders at peak performance is, you know, your best option. Um, However, they don't want to overextend him. Um, So 15 to 20 touches maybe, max, and then we know that Dubinion and Green, when given some space, can get some yardage for you. So I do think we're going to see the, the whole trio again this week, uh, but maybe not as many opportunities for Dominion. Tom Murphy with us, McClarty Daniel Hotline. Tom, the, the, the Auburn angle and the, the defensive staff that uh, certainly has connections there. T- uh, Coach said that they're not overplaying that. Do you, do you think that's a motivating factor for those guys? Do you think that translates to the players, uh, or is that just more of a media and fan narrative? Well, <laughs> Um, probably a little bit more media and fan. However, um, I asked Tim Pittman about it yesterday on our Zoom about, you know, how last weekend it was the Kenny Guyton show in that locker room. And, and you know, by all means, that was a warranted. Uh, but I do believe that if Arkansas is able to pull off a win, uh, I think Travis Williams will, will hear about it from the players um, because they've done such a good job all season on that side of the ball. Uh, it's 80-something. Uh, positions in total defense. It's uh, a, ba- a touchdown better in scoring allowed. Um, r- really good numbers. And, you know, they, their sack number is uh, almost on par with the pace of last year when they were a, a record-setting sack team for for the school record. Um, but their pass defense has been so much better this year. And um, uh, they're going to have to come up with a way to keep Jarquez Hunter bottled up and keep Thorne from ripping them with the keepers and if they do that then travis williams by all rights should be celebrated marcus woodson too hey the the limited times we've talked to those guys i've I've gotten very favorable impressions about their communication skills and so you know why they're good recruiters and stuff like that and um it's, it's been a really good season for that side of the ball Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. BetOnline, where the game starts.